Let's look at GSRT D10 uh, worksheet 5. This is where we introduce the law of cosines. Uh, first of all, we've been discussing the law of sines in the areas that it can perform for us. We found that uh, in the case where at least two angles were given to us, we were able to find uh, quite easily any of the sides or angles. Part of why those work so nicely is if you have two angles, you always got the third one for free, and so there was always this magic pairing that was required, and so on. Uh, angle side one, side two certainly is a more complex environment. We call that the ambiguous case. But it did allow, uh, in some cases, for the law of science to work because you would have an angle and a pairing of an opposite side. In looking at those, we found out that if uh, things came in the order of side, angle, side, or side, 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 uh, you were unable to use the law of sines because there was no pairing that actually took place. And so uh, we needed a new approach, and that is the law of cosines. Now the idea again is this is an oblique triangle, and so uh, we are going to turn the oblique triangle into two smaller right triangles by dropping an altitude. And uh, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem this time to kind of help us out. So over on this side, um, we're going to look at two things. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to break this side up into x and b minus x. The whole thing itself is b, but I'm going to break it into two pieces. That allows me to say x squared plus h squared equals c squared. That's one relationship I'm going to use later. And the second thing I'm going to use is that the cosine of angle A is x over c. And I'm going to solve that in terms of x. Um, and so when I cross multiply, I get x equals c times the cosine of A. Now that's just some preparatory work for uh, heading in the right direction. I'm going to go over to the right side and also set up uh, a Pythagorean relationship. h squared plus b minus x all squared equals a squared. I'm going to expand that out so I would get b squared minus 2bx plus x squared equals a. This doesn't look like we're heading in the right direction, but we can start to do some substitution. Um, if I alter this to be x squared equals c squared minus h squared, that can be now placed right in here. So let's do that. That would be h squared plus b squared minus 2bx plus c squared minus h squared equals this. You can see that all of a sudden what once was involved is now gone. h is no longer an item. And um, we can start to see a little bit of the um, Pythagorean theorem appearing again. You see the squares happening. This x, though, uh, doesn't help us out. I don't want to use the x, but I notice over here that x equals c times the cosine of a. And so let's write this out. I'm going to write my a squared on this side because I'm almost done. b squared plus c squared minus uh, 2 bc cosine of a. Whether you like it or not, this is the final product of our uh, cosine law. You can see the Pythagorean theorem hiding there. And then we subtract 2bc cos of a. Now the a, b, and the c are somewhat, I'd say, arbitrary in that if you um, were solving for, let's say, side b, it would just do uh, what you would expect. It would be b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cos of b. Do you see how it adapts there? Um, it, if, if b squared is what I'm solving for, 
then it's the cosine of the angle B. If it's A I'm solving for, uh, then it's uh, the angle A, and so on. And do you see how these just switch? And you could do it for C as well, and so on. Um, but this is uh, the cosine law. Now, one thing I'll just say before, uh, and so um, what happens here is when you have um, side angle side, um, if you go back to uh, a problem now, let me just show you how it would work quickly. So if I had a problem that looked like this, if this was a 40 degree angle, this was 15, and this was 25, and I don't know, I'll just put in the numbers, we would be solving for little a. So it would go as follows. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b c, the cosine of 40. Now this is all, it's ugly, but it's all one thing. You just cr crash that into a calculator, get a decimal, take the square root of that, and you will obtain A. Once you have A, you can move to the simpler relationship of the sine law. And uh, in this case, what I would do is you could then uh, solve for an angle using the sine law and off you would go. Here's my advice though in this kind of situation. The sine law, because uh, sine um, values in quadrant one and quadrant two, uh, acute or obtuse angles, um, are mimicked in that ratio, always solve for the smaller acute angle next. Now how do you know which one that would be? Well, don't solve for the one across from the 25, because that angle would be bigger than the one across from the 15. So you'd solve for angle C next, and then you'd be on your way. Also, if all three sides were given to you, um, so let's say you had uh, 20 here, 15 here, um, and, and 22 here, what you would do is you would use the law of cosines to get this going because you can't use the law of sines. Always solve for the biggest angle when it's side, side, side because the law of cosines can distinguish easily is it an obtuse or an acute angle. Whereas the law of sines isn't that helpful. So we would solve for V first. So it would be B squared. Well, actually we know what B squared is. 22 squared equals 20 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 20 times 15 times the cosine of B. There is your missing variable and basically using just order of operations you'd move values over, divide some out and find the inverse of cosine to obtain the angle. Once you have that angle you can then begin solving for the other angles and sides using the law of, cos uh, law of sines is what I would use at this stage.